everyone, my name is Anna and today I'm going to be doing some science fiction and physics non-fiction recommendations. Science fiction is definitely one of the genres that I love the most. Um, I study physics in university so I love reading hard sci-fi where concepts that I meet in my degree are then introduced and explored in the books. It really kind of puts a whole new spin to my degree as much as I love it. A lot of the times it can feel really abstract because I study a lot about astrophysics and so, you know, um, concepts that I will never come face to face with. So to kind of go into these sci-fi books and experience through these characters how it is to, um, you know, be in space and experience firsthand these phenomena that I learn about is something that really attracts me to the genre and that's why it holds a very special place in my heart. So I have a few recommendations for science fiction. Um, I struggled quite a lot with this one because I tend to read series and also because hard sci-fi can sometimes be really hard to read. Um, it takes me a while so I, I don't read as much volume of sci-fi as I read fantasy. If I'm looking extra glossy, it's really hot today. This is actually probably the hottest day of the month and I've decided to film not one but two videos. So <laughs> this is gonna be fun. The first series that I want to talk about is The Three Body Problem which is the first book in a trilogy and this is set during China's Cultural Revolution. We have a scientist, well a kid at the time, witnessing a red guard, the Red Guards beat her father to death, which will shape not only the rest of her life but also the future of mankind. Four decades later, Beijing police ask nanotech engineer Wang Miao to infiltrate a secretive cable of scientists after a spate of inexplicable suicides. Wang's investigation will lead him to a mysterious online game and immerse him in a virtual world ruled by the intractable and unpredictable interaction of its three sons. This is a three-body problem and it is the key to everything. The key to the scientists' deaths, the key to conspiracy that spans light years and the key to the extinction level threat humanity now faces. This is actually really interesting because I've read the whole trilogy and where it ends compared to where it starts is insane. Um, it just grows so grand and like inconceivable the ending of the trilogy is actually inconceivable to the brain actually like reading this synopsis i completely forgot this even happens i completely forgot this starts with a video game this is translated from mandarin which can make it quite hard to read at times so the first and third books were translated by ken liu but the second book was translated by joel martinson I found this one a lot harder to read, uh, even though the concept was actually quite interesting and it starts getting really political and really like, you know, to, not conspiracyist, but like there's a lot of governments trying to hide things. This one I really would have enjoyed if it was written better, but the translation just really ruins it. Like for me, this trilogy is definitely one of my favourites. It is so grandiose as I said like it ends it's crazy I can't even begin to describe it it is a hefty one to get through they're all pretty thick and they're quite hard to read and it is hard sci-fi so if you don't really like physics you will hate this quite a lot because there's a lot of um, physics concepts that are actually like real concepts like the three body problem is a real like physics problem that the physicists have been trying to solve for centuries. I think as a physics student this shit is so good <laughs> like this is so up my alley and I love it. The next book that I have to talk about is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This one I was very shocked with my return to booktube to find out that people actually don't like because I fell in love with it. This book is about Rosemary who joins the crew of the Wayfarer to, who are just kind of like a ragtag team of engineers and mechanics going through space picking up projects and they're tasked with a huge project to literally punch holes through space-time 
for fast travel. However, Rosemary has a secret and there's a reason that she's like jumped on the ship and you know, taken it to like deep space. <laughs> um, this is such a feel good, it's a very different vibe from um, the three body problem, definitely. This is just so, so, so heartwarming. It's very character driven, like the plot, there is a plot, but it's just so not important compared to the character dynamics and the character relationships and the developments and you know, Rosemary is hiding something from the crew. There's the obvious um, plot line that will eventually, you know, they will eventually find out what she's hiding. And I love this one. There's a lot of rep. Um, there's, there's so many like species that are, that Becky Chambers has come up with and they're also distinct in their own uh, characteristics and culture and language and it's so diverse in that aspect and also you know sexuality wise relationship wise there's a lot of really open characters I just thought it was really really nice because unfortunately and while I was making this list I was really conscious of it I couldn't think of a lot of sci-fi that is written by women and even less that is written by queer women that I have read I've become aware of a lot more that I want to get into and read but this is the most prominent one in my mind and it makes me so happy that it exists because I think before this book subconsciously I could I didn't think that queer women are to do right science fiction so this really made me think wait if she writes it there must be other queer women that write it right yeah and there's a lot of relationship dynamics in here a lot of secrets that are revealed and there's also a sequel, which is A Closed and Common Orbit. This one follows two characters from the first book, but not like Rosemary. Um, it's part of why I didn't really like this one as much, just because I got really invested in the characters in The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Um, so while I enjoyed the plot of this, I didn't care about the characters nearly enough. But they're both really cool. They The world building is insane, so immersive, so incredible. And there's a third book in this series that I have not read yet, but I will be getting to it. Um, I think also because they're kind of like standalones, I don't really feel like I have to read the next one just because like I, I don't feel the need to rush it. Like I think I'm keep, I've kind of kept them so that, oh, the next time I'm kind of craving that like heartwarming fuzzies feel feeling. I can just pick up the next one. The last book I want to talk about and this one I was kind of worried of putting on here just because I didn't actually write. The book is Proxima by Stephen Baxter. This is a story about people that are sent to colonize Proxima Centauri. So what I really like about this book and what I kind of spoke about in my intro was that this is why I love reading hard sci-fi because I, I learned about Proxima Centauri, our closest star, except for the sun. And to read a book which describes and goes through what life could be like on it and what colonizing it would be like as an experience, it is really, really um, interesting to read. And there are a lot, there's a lot of plot twists on this, which I really enjoyed. It just becomes so grandiose and it kind of goes from just the fight for survival on this hostile planet to more like of a conspiracy type thing like why were we put here etc. I hate the characters so much which is why I debated recommending this because I, I don't want to recommend a book where I dislike the characters. The characters in this honestly are so frustrating. I just remember reading every page and being like, oh my god, shut up already. <laughs> you know, just, just shut your mouth. There are a few characters that are introduced later on, but the main characters, the like group of colonizers that goes, god, I literally, a lot of them die very early on and I was like, thank the lord because I could not have gone a whole book reading about you guys. Um, I do hear this a lot about Stephen Baxter. This is the only book I've read of his, even though I own quite a few actually. But um, yeah, his characters, I think that's where he falls short. He has amazing world building and actually pretty compelling plots, but his characters fall through. They're also flat 
and he tries so hard to make them flawed because you know that would give a character dimension but they're just too flawed they're just annoying i think it definitely makes up for it with the world building and the plot and the um like plot twists oh amazing there are other books in the series but i think they're not necessarily related plot wise definitely if you're looking for some good world building and you can get through annoying characters i would totally recommend and the plot this one is also one of those where it starts with such a simple concept you know just survive on this exoplanet and just, shit just hits the fan it really does and it just grows into this massive like thing so now we're gonna go into physics rex which i actually don't have literally any of these books in physical form except for one because uh, they're all at uni. Uh, the first one is We Need to Talk About Kelvin by Ma Marcus Chan. Um, this one covers a range of topics and what I really like about it is it really takes basically everyday topics and then kind of breaks them down and kind of like connects the occurrence of those to like grand things in the universe and I think that's a really good one to for, for someone that's not really into physics to get into because I know a lot of people have this opinion about physics research where it's like okay what does it matter why should we know it why should I care about a planet millions and millions of kilometers away I think this book is really good at illustrating how you know understanding space actually helps us understand the world around us I think this is definitely more aimed at teens or people that are not in that uneducated on physics uh, if you're a physics student literally at a level or higher you would probably already know most of the things it talks about i read this in my first year of a levels and by the time i finished it i had basically done most of the topics on it the next book is the future of humanity by michio kaku i spoke about this in my july wrap-up so i'm not going to go into too much detail but it's floppy. It's basically Michio Kaku just um, exploring the history of science in general and how it's developed in the last few centuries and then using that to predict how science will develop. It's a really interesting one, it paints a beautiful picture of the future, it's really optimistic which is quite nice because a lot of these do have quite a doomsday vibe to them. I love this, it was one of my favourite non-fiction books I've read. The next one is Calculating the Cosmos by Ian Stewart. This one my mum bought me for my birthday and when I first saw it, because I'm not really a mathsy gal, I'm really not, um, when I first saw the title I was like, oh my god, like she's gone and gotten me like a maths book, oh no. And the name is a bit mis misleading, there are quite a lot of like maths concepts in it but there's no like big like maths chunks or like maths terminology. It describes the architecture of space and time dark matter and dark energy, how galaxies form, why stars implode, how everything began and how it ends, according to the Waterstone synopsis, I think. Um, this is like insane because it's a summary of like years of knowledge in like 350 pages. Um, there is so much content and so much to learn about space and physics and it's also nicely condensed and there's a lot of illustrations that make it really easy to visualise these concepts that he's trying to introduce. I read this before my year, first year of undergrad and going through my first year, I really, there, there was so many topics that I'd already been exposed to in that book that I was like, oh, I already read about it in that book. Now I kind of already have a touch with it and I know where to go from here. I do a lot of this reading for uni, but I actually enjoy it because I enjoy my course. The last one, I had to include this one. The last one is The Quantum Universe by Brian Cox and Jeff Forscher. Um, Brian Cox and Jeff Forscher are actually my professors in university um, and they're lovely. I had a course with them in SEM 1 and I have another one with Jeff in my next SEM which is exciting. This book is very accessible and requires barely any previous knowledge. I think it's up there with the we need to talk about Kelvin in that it's a really good starting point if you want to understand or try to understand quantum mechanics but I think also because quantum mechanics is such a complex topic even if you're a physics student there's a lot of people that say if you think you understand quantum theory you haven't thought about it hard enough when you're studying physics you just kind of start to accept it just because 
okay, if I consider quantum, like if I consider relativity, if I consider quantum effects, then I can solve this question. And it's like kind of reduced to a mathematical formula, but it's just so like conceptually so much more than that. So I think this was a really good book for me to understand conceptually quantum theory and to kind of uh, become more aware of what I should be thinking about when I'm doing these questions. I really enjoyed this book as well. Um, I would definitely recommend it. It is very accessible, as I said, and they're really good at kind of passing the point. And they have a really good balance of content that's like quite like more physics heavy and content that's more accessible so it really like teaches you something like it's not just like quantum theory for dummies type thing like it actually does have quite a lot of physics in it thank you all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you do end up reading any of the books i've recommended please please let me know what you thought of them or if you have any books to recommend me specifically by um lgbt plus writers I would really really love to read them just because I feel like they, my bookshelf really lacks them. If you have any other thoughts please let me know down below um, and I would love to hear your opinions on any of these books I've mentioned. Um, as always please feel free to subscribe if you would like to, I post new videos twice a week. Uh, also follow me on Twitter to get my real life book thoughts. Alright thank you everyone, I'll see you next time, bye!